markets are open, market money is coming back into equities again, and so everybody is smiling. Well, there are new rules now that are in the works for the South African consumer goods and services industry. Neville Melville, who is the consumer goods and services ombudsman, joins me to explain the changes. Neville, thank you for coming through. I'm That's glad I didn't stumble on your name, first name and surname. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> so what has changed here? Well, what, what will change in the very near future, we hope, is that we'll get a code which makes it compulsory for everyone who's within the consumer goods and services industry yeah. to actually subscribe to the code and be uh, a member of and under the jurisdiction of the Ombudsman. Right. So as it stands at present, we have a v uh, on a voluntary basis, most of the larger organizations, which you might refer to as the high street dealers, the, the Woolworths, the pick and pay, uh, checkers, etc., yeah. all the furniture shops, uh, they've all joined on a voluntary basis and they comply with the code and um, with our, our processes and rulings. Right. But where we run into problems is the, the, the smaller guys and, and some of the, the people involved in the cell phone industry. Yeah. And th although they may run their own uh, complaint mechanisms and so forth, they don't fall with it within our domain. Yeah. And sometimes that makes it very difficult and very frustrating for consumers okay. who send something to us and we try and help them, yeah. but often it, it drags on for months and we get nowhere. Okay. So let's talk, I mean, this is a huge sector, right? And I'm trying to understand in my head just the kind of companies that operate in this space and the, 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 the range of goods uh, uh, and services that we're talking about here. Right. Oh, yes, you're quite right. I don't, I don't even know the extent of it myself. I, I know we've had <laughs> right from the one extreme. It's, it's uh, almost like everything. Yeah, we've had wedding arrangements. We've had funerals. We've had uh, flights. We've had uh, and, and mostly we, we get cell phones furniture, yeah. you know, the big ta uh, price tag items, because yeah. I don't think most people, although we did get one such complaint, most people are not going to go and complain about a litre of milk. Okay, you I know, was thinking about it, actually, yeah, <laughs> if, I, if, if, if I buy milk that's gone bad, right. I should be able to come back and get a replacement. If yes. they don't want to give me a replacement, I must come and complain. Well, well we would <laughs> hope that would be resolved <laughs> at a lower level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so it's a huge sector that we're talking yes, about very here. Much so. And there's a potential that there could be uh, like, like a flood of complaints that would just shut down the system um, and not make it effective. Well, that, that was the experience of the National Consumer Commission when it first set up. Yeah. But uh, we, we've been going, well, I've been appointed since uh, June last year, and it's fairly steady. Look, obviously, once it's thrown open, yeah. um, then there may be a peak. Uh, but uh, I think we're keeping it within manageable limits at present. Okay. Just in terms of the conduct of the companies themselves, as you said, what you have now is a situation where it's voluntary for these guys to come in and register with you and uh, work with you on resolving complaints, etc. Now it's going to become compulsory. Mm. How has been the experience when these guys were working voluntarily with you? Well, I, I think most of the bigger entities are, are concerned about their reputations and they, they can separate the... the the problem from the rest of what they do, yeah. whereas with the smaller guys, uh, reputation doesn't seem to be uh, yeah. so, so important, unfortunately, because yeah. that's where they should be competing. Yeah. And um, the, the other mistake they make is because it's so close and personal, they take it personally when someone complains and they right. get quite angry <laughs> and quite aggressive yeah. and threaten yeah. lawyers yeah. and all yeah. sorts of things like that. Whereas, whereas if it's Woolworths, just to use an example, that's a department, it's someone who goes home yeah. at five yeah. um, who's a professional person who's Absolutely. dealing with the complaints. Yeah, it's interesting because uh, I follow Pick and Pay uh, on Twitter mm -hmm. and uh, you see uh, some complaints here and there and you see an immediate response from the company in terms of uh, 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 trying to settle that issue with the, with the complaint. Right. So with the, with the advent of social media, is there an opportunity actually for you and for the companies to try and resolve these things in, in an amicable way because of the fear sure. of reputational damage? Right. Yes, it's, it's certainly an opportunity and a serious challenge because people expect immediate um, <coughs> resolution of complaints. Whereas yes. the, uh, but the that's a fair thing, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, certainly. I've given you money. Not. You've but given me a product that's uh, not right. Right. So. But it's, it's not always possible. I mean, in the game that we play in, for instance, if you've got a couch that's got a problem, it may mean, mean someone going to the back of beyond to go and inspect it and yeah, yeah. find that the person's not there because it's a Saturday, they're on a funeral, yeah, and so it can yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah. You know, so those are the, the practical challenges that we face. Yeah. Now, in terms of the penalties for companies that don't comply, what are you proposing? Well, what, what will happen is if they don't sign up, there's something we could report to the National Consumer Commission because it will be a contravention of the Consumer Protection Act in itself, um, but hopefully p people will come on a, on a voluntary basis. That, that's yeah. always the hope, because otherwise, if, if we're going to be at loggerheads with people yeah. and fighting the lawyers, uh, yeah. <laughs> then we're going nowhere. But is it anything that would make them think twice before 
Yes, well, certainly they could they could end up with a, an administrative fine. Apart from the administrative, uh, sorry, apart from the reputational damage, yeah. they, they they could pay up to a million rand fine and um, uh, have all sorts of other problems that flow from that. They can yeah. get compliance notices telling them what they have to do. And it, it's just not a space that I think that uh, genuine want businesses would want to be yeah, in. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Never, I, I, I don't want you to be out of a job, but I'm just <laughs> asking the question here. Are we not over-regulating in South Africa? I mean, we hear the government wants to ban advertising on this and that, and they want to make this composer and this and that. Are we in danger of becoming a nanny state here? Well, I, I think certainly with this piece of legislation, yeah. it's been very careful in the way it's worded in that it gives people, it empowers them to deal with their complaints, but it, it, it doesn't allow them just to abdicate their, their own responsibility. So, for instance... The individual. Yeah. So if they want to enter into an agreement, uh, they have to be provided with the information so they can make an informed decision. So the decision still mm -hmm. remains with them, yeah. and there are actually a number of responsibilities, although not directly stated, yeah. that still sit with the consumer. So if they want to gain the, the benefit of the right, they, they should make themselves aware of what their, their um, obligations are as far as that's concerned. Yeah. While we have you here, we've got about two minutes left uh, off, off of the interview. Sure. Just wanted to talk to you about the nature of some of the complaints that you've been dealing with. Yeah, I think primarily we deal with, well, it's, it's, it follows the whole process. So it could be from how something was advertised, whether it yeah. was in stock or not in stock, whether it was at the correct <coughs> price. Yeah. And, and that's, that's a very contentious issue. If you arrive at the store, you, you, you sit outside from 4 o'clock in the morning, the, the doors open and you find that there's, yeah. there's nothing yeah. in stock. Yeah. Um, then you uh, um, select something, particular furniture, you have a, an agreed delivery date, grandma's coming on the whatever date and yeah. the bed yeah. doesn't arrive. Yeah. And, and when it does arrive, the, <laughs> yeah. there's a problem with the, sp the springs, they, they stick through the, the mat or the creaky yeah. or whatever, yeah. Th those are the sort of things. Are they reasonable? Are, is South Afri are, are South Africans a complaining nation? Or are these reasonable complaints, really? Uh, I think by and large, I think we get some chances as well. Yeah. And I think we, we have some people who presume themselves to be more expert in, in the, the law than anyone else. Yeah. Um, but, but certainly, I, I think by and large, people carry on with life. And, um, you know, it, it, it takes really something to... Spur them into making a complaint. Okay. So the changes that we're talking about potentially just repeat for us again. So you're expecting uh, this to come into play in, in 2015? Yes. We, we're certainly hoping, it, hoping that it happens before the, the new financial year in, uh, in the, from the 1st of March of okay. next year. The so fiscal we can, year, yeah. Yeah. So we, we can get that all sorted out. But basically people will have to register with us yeah. and will have to contribute towards the running of our office and comply with our, our processes and, and cooperate. There's another little cost added again to your tax and mine. Thanks <laughs> to uh, Neville Melville. He is the Consumer Goods and Services Ombudsman chatting to us about those proposed changes uh, to the Consumer Goods section.